Hey everyone, Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. How's everyone doing today? It is Saturday, September 18th, 2021. Welcome to another edition of our Saturday Synopsis, Saturday YouTube video. What we like to do here is we like to take a look at the charts, the indexes, individual stocks. I try to help you gauge where the market has been and where the market might be going. We do that by looking at charts. We look at support and resistance levels. We look at moving averages. We look at other technical indicators. That is what's called technical analysis, chart reading. And that is how I base my own trading and the trading for my newsletters that I run when I help people try to gauge where stock might be going. And then we take the appropriate option trade. We sell put options. We sell put option spreads here at the Smart Option Seller. And those are mostly bullish trades. So we're always looking for bullish stocks. And the way we do that is we just look at the charts over and over and over again. All we do is look at charts, trying to gauge where a stock might be headed. And if it looks like it's headed higher, then we engage with a, a put trade, a put sell trade, or a put option sell spread trade. Okay, so let's just jump right in and go right to it. And before we start that, just want to remind you, you can always subscribe to this YouTube channel. You see that red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the video. Please click on that. You'll never miss a video. You turn on your notifications and every Saturday I usually put out another one of these. So don't forget to subscribe. Okay. So let's jump right in. What we like to do is we like to take a look at the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S and P 500, which I view as the, the broadest measure of the market as a whole. So we like to take a look at the S and P 500. We'll look at the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones industrial. So, what do we do here? If you've been watching these videos over time, you know that I like to talk about what we've seen in the past, patterns that are developing, and try to get a gauge of where a stock might be headed next. Now, when you're looking for bullish trades as such as we are, we always want to see the stock or index in an upwards momentum, meaning if you're looking at a chart like this, this is roughly two years worth of uh, of, a, of a chart on my screen, the real estate here. So we wanna see a chart moving from the bottom right, I'm sorry, from the bottom left to the top right. That means it's moving upwards, okay? And what I look at here is a daily bar chart. Every one of these lines that you see, one of these long vertical or short vertical lines is one day's worth of trading. Now, depending on what type of trader you are, if you're a hyperactive trader where you can look at one minute bars, we can change these to one minute bars. If when my chart loads up here, each one of these lines is now one minute's worth of trading. So these are very, very short term. These are for very hyperactive traders that are maybe looking for patterns. And you know, if that works for you, great. But we focus on the daily chart, which is each one of these bars or lines is one day's worth of trading. And then we can also go back and we'd like to back it out even more we look at the monthly chart so one, each line here is one month's worth of trading so this goes back to sometime in 1993 we can see the market has moved up greatly over time especially since 2009 when we had the the, the financial crisis and the market's just gone up since here this big dip here was march 2020 when the pandemic hit but we've gone straight up since then. So we like to take a look at the daily chart because most of our trades are in the one to three month range. And so we concentrate a little bit longer time frame, which is daily charts. So what are we seeing on the charts? This is the S&P 500 as represented by the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund. We like to watch a stock that is in an uptrend. And in the stock market, just like physics, I bring this up every week, that a stock in motion Will tend, to, will tend to stay in that motion till something comes along and knocks it in the other direction. It's just like physics, an object in motion stays in that same motion until something comes along and knocks it in the other direction. That's how stocks work too, they work on momentum. And as long as the company itself, remember these, this is an actual company, these are actual companies that create actual products that people actually buy. So as long as companies are creating good products, having increasing sales quarter after quarter, then the stock price will follow over time in the upwards direction. Yes, from time to time, there may be a bad or a, a worse than expected earnings, which could knock the stock lower. Same thing with the indexes, they, they, they move up and down. This is normal ebb and flow. Now, what we're seeing in the world is of course, 
the pandemic, the COVID pandemic is still out there. Countries are trying to vaccinate their citizens. It's happening. So, and there's really nothing as I see it, that's going to derail this uptrending market. Now there's a lot of narratives out there about, well, the U S federal reserve is, is going to start raising interest rates at some point. Uh, you know, the pandemic has created lots of troubles. You got a lot of supply shortages, world turmoil. I mean, there's so many narratives out there that one could think that we have to have a bear market. There has, there's so many bad things out there in the world that it's going to knock this stock market down. Now, if you've been watching history over time, now let's go to the monthly chart between 2008, 2007, when this, the financial crisis started happening till now, look where the market has gone. Okay. So during that time, there's always been, you know, world events, pandemics, financial meltdowns, crises overseas, depending on what country you're living in. I mean, there's always going to be bad news, right? There's always going to be bad news out there, but the market tells you otherwise, right? The stock market, as I said, is made up of companies that create products. And as long as those companies create sales that are growing each quarter, the stock prices have to follow it upwards. You're never going to find a company that has good sales quarter after quarter where their stock price goes down. It just doesn't happen. And so that's what the stock market is made of. It's made up of companies that are creating products and sales and their earnings are driving higher all the time. And that's why the stock market goes up. In addition to that, the stock market compared to bonds, CDs, real estate, gold, whatever, there's, you're not going to get any other kind of return on your money other than in the stock market itself. So yes, we have this push that, that raises the stock market because so many people are playing in it because that's the only place where you can get a, a return on your money. But the, the underlying fundamental is still that it is still made up of companies that are creating products that are creating increasing sales over time. So the, the narrative that we can't go up any higher it is a false narrative. Yes, we will have pullbacks from time to time. Obviously, you can see it goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. But in the long run, it, it goes up over time in between these pullbacks. So what do we do? How do we how do we make our trades? Well, you know, our time frame is typically one to three months out in time. So we have to follow the way I do it on my charts. I have a 20 day a 50 day and a 200 day moving average. Those are the three moving averages that I track to help me gauge where a stock might be headed. And down here is what's called the RSI indicator. And is an, and it is an overbought, oversold momentum indicator. It tells you when a stock or index may be getting a little overheated or too much selling happening. Okay. But a majority of the time it fluctuates around this 50 level. So the range is a hundred to zero, obviously for the RSI. I use the 80 level and the 20 level to tell me if and when a stock or index may be getting a little overbought or oversold, but majority of the time it will fluctuate in that 80 to 20 range, somewhere in the middle. And as the stock moves up, you can see that it just kind of hovers around that 50 level, you know, up or down in between that. So what we like to do is we like to follow the 20 day, the blue 20 day and this red 50 day, most stocks, majority of stocks on the short term time frame will will hug along the 50 day or 20 day moving average and when it pulls back to one of those it typically will bounce after a number of days now that's what i base my decisions on knowing that there's really nothing to derail the uptrending market i i watch for the pullbacks you can see here's a pullback here's a pullback here's a pullback Here's a pullback. And every time the market regains its footing and goes back up here, here, and where we are right now, we've had some selling in the last two weeks of the market. People are getting a little nervous, but the S and P 500 has just hit all time new highs right around September 1st, right here. Okay. How can you complain about a market that's been going up, up, up like this, and then has a little bit of a pullback. It shouldn't make you too concerned because that's what the market does. Were you concerned when it pulled back here thinking, okay, the bull market has ended. Now we have to have a bear market. 
were you thinking the same thing here? Maybe you were thinking the same thing here and here and here. Why does the market keep going up? Because it's made up of companies that put out actual sales. So yes, the last two weeks we've had some selling in the stock market and we don't like to see a lot of selling like two weeks worth of selling. This can make a lot of people nervous. If you're a shorter term trader, if you're not really focusing on the long term trend, we had a little two week break here. We had a, you know, a week here, a week here, but look what happens. It keeps bouncing up. So to me, I'm waiting to see, okay, I'm watching this very closely. We closed below yesterday, Friday, September 17th, below the 50 day moving average. Okay. So what I like to do is watch it for the next couple of days, watch for the next couple of days. Cause I have like this, this loose three day rule where I like to see whether it can, it will trade more than three days below a major moving average like this. So you can see it went below it a little bit here, went below it a little bit here for two days. What else we have here? We had about two good days below it, but still bounced up. So, you know, we may have this normal ebb and flow and maybe next week the market will regain its footing and continue on with its momentum higher. Like I said, I don't really see any narrative out there that's all of a sudden going to knock this thing back down. Now, seasonally, August and September are, are the worst or the weakest months in the year for the stock market. And we're right in that middle of September. So this could be the 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 selling that we've typically see in August and September and these last few months of the year really end up being very strong months. So watch this for the next couple of days. I have a feeling the market will regain its footing and go back up higher. Where else are people going to put their money? Yeah, we may have a little more selling, but eventually people will realize stocks are where it's at. We got to get in the stock market. So it'll go back up. But if you're a hyperactive trader and you're playing here and you know, you bought some stocks up here, yeah, you may be a little nervous. So watch the 50 day moving average. That's what I do. Let's take a look at, let's back out here. And here's the, here's the E-mini S and P 500 futures contracts, which trade almost 24 hours a day during the week. So the same thing, you can see that it's, it's, it came down to the 20, the 50 day moving average, just like this one, this one, this one, this one. So odds are, it's going to regain its footing and move higher. Okay. So we're watching that. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. We'll look at the NASDAQ futures and the NASDAQ composite itself. The NASDAQ futures, uh, was finding support at the 20 day moving average, but it closed below it yesterday, Friday, September 17th. So maybe we'll see a little sell off early mid next week, maybe to the 50 day moving average. You can see it also hugs the 20 day and sometimes the 50 day moving average. Now here it spent a couple, maybe almost a week below it, but regained its footing. This was back in uh, May. So let's like, a, let's take a look at the NASDAQ composite, which is, doesn't trade as many hours as the futures. So here's the NASDAQ composite, blow it up a little so you can see blue 20 day moving average. So it's kind of hugging or hovering around the 20 day, trying to figure out where it wants to go. It may come down. There's not a lot of lot, there's not a lot more to fall to hit the, the 50 day. So we may see a, a quick move down to the 50 day and a, and a possible bounce. You can see same thing happened here. Uh, we had a little move here. Um, I, you know, a while ago, this is a W pattern, which is typically a bullish pattern. It blasted out above the resistance line and moving higher. So, you know, the NASDAQ and the S and P 500, I put a little more emphasis on because it has more stocks in it. Whereas compared to the Dow Jones industrial, which is only made up of 30 stocks. I don't think that's enough of a re representative of the market as a whole, but we look at the Dow anyway. Now the Dow this past week, look at this really tight range here. Not a lot of, a lot of, not a lot of movement. Yes. It's fallen below my support line that I, that I've drawn in the past. It looks a little jumbled here. I'm going to remove some of this stuff here and maybe get a different picture of what's happening. You can always, you know, when you're, when you're doing technical analysis, it's all about drawing trend lines and support and resistance, but those change over time. So it's okay to redraw them from time to time. So what I'm seeing is, yeah, we still have, if we want to draw some, some newer trend lines here, you, you kind of connect the bottoms. Okay. So we kind of have, it looks like it may have fallen below an, an uptrending trend line, which is fine. Um, it has fallen below the 50 day and 20 day moving arts. It's kind of hugging around here, but I think the Dow sort of gets its 
um, cues from the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. So it, it's trying to figure out what it wants to do. Eventually, I think with the rest of the market, it's going to come back up higher. People need to be invested. They need to have a return on the money. And stocks are doing well. Companies are doing well. Earnings seasons are usually do pretty good. So the, the stock prices will follow eventually after we get these pullbacks. Pullbacks are part of the normal ebb and flow of the market. You can see pullback here, pullback here, pullback here. All these pullbacks. But in the longer move, you can see the upwards momentum. So you have to have somewhat of a longer term view, at least in my opinion. If you're a hyperactive trader and you're looking at one minute charts, you know, the market is so erratic in that short time frame, it's very hard to gauge where it's going to go. So we need to back it out and look at a longer term time frame. I'm bullish for the long run. Why Why would I be otherwise? Sure, we're going to have pullbacks. And if you if you get into trades up here, bullish trades, then you might have to invoke uh, you know, your, your risk management plan. You may have to make adjustments. That's just part of trading. Okay, if you're going to trade and you're looking at shorter time frames, adjustments are, are part of the game. That's just how it is. So I think the market looks good in the, in the long run. It, it, it has always looked good. I mean, of course, the pandemic shook everybody out. It was a very unique situation. But once again, companies are, are, are still operating. Companies are putting out earnings, good earnings, good sales, and the stock prices will follow. So let's take a look at some individual stocks as we do, see what's happening on, on that front. We look at Apple every week because so many people love Apple stock. Let's take a look at what's happening here. So Apple, we had the W pattern for a while. It went up, it came back down, and we had this channel right here. So Apple finally, after it bounced a number of times off the 200-day moving average, which we call the granddaddy of the moving averages, finally rallied. It went from about 125 a share all the way up to 155. A nice $30 run in just a couple months peaked out all-time highs right here, about 157 and a half, uh, about a week or so ago, and has come back down, has lost about $10 a share. <clears throat> Where does Apple lie now? Well, let's draw some, some new patterns here and see what we can glean from Apple, if there's any pattern to see. Now, what we can look at now, it's also all of the eye of the beholder as well. Some, I may see something that somebody else may see a completely different pattern. Now we can kind of draw maybe a little bit of an uptrending line here. Um, so we've got some upward support uh, here. You know, there's really nothing, there's really nothing that, that uh, is telling me it's going to keep falling. Um, you know, we, we kind of had a, I don't even want to draw it. We kind of had a, another uptrending edge here, which it blew out of the, the channel, has come down to the bottom of this channel now. So maybe it's going to store up some energy here. It's fallen below the 20-day, fallen below the 50-day, but it's catching this upward bottom of the channel right here. Maybe it'll bounce. Uh, but I can't really see uh, a reason why the the stock will completely fall or drop bearishly to the 200 day moving average here which is about 134 dollars a share maybe it will you never know the market can be irrational I, apple just came out with a new iphone 13 people should be excited about that so maybe it'll start to um get the stock moving up again but for now we've got a little bit of a channel here I'm not expecting too much from Apple over the next couple of days, especially if the market kind of remains a little weak or, or trying to find its footing. Apple will try to will do the same thing. It'll probably meander right along this this line here, this bottom support line, which would only be a couple more dollars a share. So Apple pretty much um, staying in this range right here. All right, let's take a look at another stock here. Let's take a look at. What do we have? Look at let's look at some of the biggies. Amazon. Amazon still has been in this channel for a very long time. Popped above it. Looked like it was getting ready to go um, for more all-time new highs, but had the earnings announcement dropped a couple hundred dollars a share, and so it's just trying to find its footing here. After a huge move like that, it wants to try to close this gap. Meaning, over time, it'll rally back up to fill this huge gaping hole here. And by filling, it means over time the, the stock will move up to 
eventually move back up to this last bar here where before the big gap happened and we're very close to that so it's almost filled it you can see the top here has almost reached the bottom here so this whole gap's almost been filled so amazon's gonna probably meander around here a little bit and i'm sure eventually it will continue to go higher it's holding support at the 50-day moving average right here so amazon's still kind of stuck here probably will meander a little bit more but i think in the long run it'll find its footing and go back up even more um netflix netflix looks very similar to amazon been in this long channel here but finally broke above it if you just extend this line here you can see it's moved above the resistance catching support right here in the the 20 day moving average so netflix actually looks stronger than compared to amazon so we may see it continue to go higher uh in the future let's see what else we have what other stocks do we like to take a look at oracle we've we've done some put sell plays on oracle just this week uh i like the oracle finally had its earnings just the other day so it pulled back a little which i thought was a a gift for us so we got into a put sell trade and so now it's just kind of meandering trying to um consolidate or digest the earnings announcement there as you can see there was a little gap here gap lower but has mostly filled that gap and see if we could blow it up a little bit more here so uh oracle great company looking to continue on its all-time highs in the future uh, we like this stock sold some put options on it let's look at cisco cisco has also been in a nice uptrend here you can see been in a nice uptrend and now has pulled back from all-time new highs all-time new highs here pulled back to the 50-day moving average so for any of you looking to get long looking to possibly time your entries a, a situation like this where stocks made all-time new highs has pulled back to a, 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 a huge support area of the 50-day moving average could be the the trigger that will allow you to time your your bullish entries so if you're looking to possibly get long cisco a pattern like this is something you would want to look for now you could wait until it confirms the support here and starts to tick back up that way you know okay cisco has bounced it's moving back up you may not buy at the bottom but you can wait for that confirmation so if you buy now it could be a false signal and it could fall more so maybe you decide do you want to wait for it to bounce and not get in at the very bottom or or nibble here maybe buy a few shares and see what's going to happen because it could pull back more so you want possibly want to wait for the confirmation that it's going to move back up let's see what else we have uh, Walmart is another stock we like, uh, has pulled back. It's starting this new little downtrend channel, kind of hover, hovering near the 50 day moving average. It's got the 200 day moving average, not far below it. If you, you know, Walmart's a great company, uh, the largest physical retailer on the planet. If you want to get long Walmart, you know, you watch for the pullbacks and, and, and then if you wait for confirmation for the, the next leg higher, that's when you can jump in. But Walmart kind of looks a little ugly here, but if you're in for the long haul, Walmart is not a bad company to consider. What else? Disney. We like to take a look at Disney. Here's a lot of different patterns. We had an up channel, down channel. Now we have the sideways channel. Uh, it's popping above the resistance hugging or getting support at the 50 20 and 200 day moving averages that are starting to curl upwards that's something you want to see as well you want to see the moving averages moving upwards that can confirm the uptrend so the moving averages are an upward you can see they're they're sloping upwards uh disney bouncing off the 20 day so disney actually looks kind of good here i like the i like the the, the sort of the rounded bottom here the rounded bottom looks like Disney storing up some energy to make that run to possible more all-time new highs in the near future what else do we like to see Tesla we always look at Tesla uh, in this uptrending channel so I did a video about two weeks ago I wasn't here last Saturday <clears throat> so about a week ago I guess Tesla was in here kind of hugging along the 20 day moving average. So it's in this little uptrending channel, Tesla, you know, people love Tesla. And, and as of now, 
it, it's showing bullish signs based on this channel. So it may pull back to the bottom. It may pull back to the, the uh, moving averages here. So Tesla is in this upwards channel moving very slowly. Okay, I don't think it's going to have a massive pullback until we wait for the next earnings announcements. Next quarter earnings start sometime in you know middle of October or so. So we have about a month before we start to see earnings come out. But until then, Tesla will probably be engaged in this uptrending channel here. Let's see what else. Also, let's take a look at some of the healthcare stocks because those have been getting hit of late. I think there's some you know talk in the U.S. about um, trying to um, get prescription drug prices to a minimum. So some of these healthcare stocks are probably taking a little bit of a hit because, uh, some of their, their drug prices might not be as expensive in the future. So that could affect future earnings. So this is Eli Lilly has come down, uh, over the last few weeks, still looks like it's moving lower, but you can see down here at the RSI getting very close to that 25 typical level. I look for the 20 level as my support. So Lily coming down. Um, I want to show you Bristol Myers because this one is, look at this just incredible quick couple week down move getting very, very oversold here. Does it mean it's going to automatically turn around and start a move higher? No, it's just telling me, hey, watch it here. This thing is getting oversold. The selling may start to subside keep a watch on it this is a big move for bmw it, it's fallen out of the upward channel got hit very hard but the selling could be coming to uh an end doesn't mean it's going to pop back up all of a sudden but we could get some consolidation down here let's see what other uh pfizer same thing all these drug companies pulling back Pulling back on the RSI, um, Merck as well. These look at this falling out of the upward channel. Merck getting hit too, starting to get into that oversold area. So some of these pharmaceutical companies could possibly start to see the selling come to an end. Probably will consolidate. People realize, hey, you know, these are still good companies. Let's start to buy it back up. So start to watch at these these lower levels here for the for, for the pharmaceuticals. Um, what else we have? Costco still doing well mcdonald's um still doing well was in this channel still moving up i like the 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 rounded upwards momentum here pepsi pepsi we usually look at pepsi let's open this up a little bit more so if you want to draw some support <clears throat> this is what you do you kind of get the bottoms and you draw the line right here so looks like pepsi is just kind of sitting on the support if it breaks through it it may drop, could start moving towards the 200 day moving average here. If it bounces, it could go to more all time new highs. So watch this 155 level pretty closely, uh, 154, 155 on Pepsi. See what happens there. Uh, Twitter, we got we, we have positions on Twitter bouncing right here. Here's the 200 day moving average. This is really the line in the sand. It fell below it got its footing and starting to move back up. Now the 20 day and 50 day, they're sloping downwards. So Twitter's gonna have a little bit of trouble here until it can really get the price action moving higher again. So we wanna see Twitter start to move back up. We have position and we like it to be bullish. So Twitter needs to get on its move and start to move higher. But it may have some consolidation where it's between the 200 day, 20 day. So there's some, some friction. So Twitter could possibly just kind of meander around here or it can try to break break above it. So watch Twitter for the next couple of days or so. Uh, what else we have? I don't like to look at these these meme stocks anymore. Um, Chewy, a pet company, pet store, Peloton, just kind of not doing too much. Let's look at Facebook. Facebook is stock that we've sold put options on, has been in this nice uptrending channel. Actually, let me pull this back a little uptrending channel fallen right down to the 50 day moving average. Want to see this start to, we want to see Facebook bounce. Odds are it will. It's still in this uptrending channel. Is there a reason why Facebook would all of a sudden start to have a, a, a full on bear market? Probably not until the next earnings comes out. So it, it'll probably bounce off this 50 day. If you're looking to get long Facebook, maybe wait for the bounce to confirm or you nibble here if you want to try to front run it. But, but Facebook still seems to be in this uptrending channel. 
All right, getting a little long here, getting close to 30 minutes. Let's wrap this up once again. SPY, you know, coming down to the 50 day moving average, but it's bounced every other time off of it. So keep an eye on it. I, I think we've still got bull legs. You know, what's the, you know, what's going to knock it down? What, what's the narrative that's going to all of a sudden make all these 500 stocks have a, have a bear move? Uh, you know, seasonal pattern, yes, but in the long run, it should keep going up. I'm in bullish for the long run. On a day-to-day -day basis, anything could happen. So it depends on your time frame. All right, that's all for this. Let's pull up our uh, website real quick. Our website, smartoptionseller.com. Put Selling Basics. This is our free guide on how to sell put options. That's mainly what we do. We sell put options, we sell put option spreads. So go to our website, click on the Put Selling Basics. <clears throat> Put your name and email address, email address here. We'll send you a free copy of our put song. Also, lastly, our services tab. Click on it. Hover your mouse over it. We have a smart option seller newsletter, vertical spread trader newsletter, and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. Those are the services that we offer. Shoot me an email. Let me know what you're thinking. If you want some help, we can always tell you what we offer. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Send me an email. I love hearing from you, and I will always try to answer. All right, that's all for me today. I hope everyone has a great week and weekend and a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.